In the previous lectures, we have been studying about semaphores, which was a way to solve synchronization problems. So we have seen semaphores and we have seen how it works. And we have also tested semaphores using some of the classic problems of synchronization, like the bounded buffer problem, the reader's writer's problem, and the dining philosopher's problem. So we saw that semaphores are good, but also we saw that semaphores had some disadvantages. So we saw that in some cases, semaphores were causing some errors like timing errors and deadlocks. So especially when we have discussed about the dining philosopher's problem, we have seen how semaphores could lead to deadlocks. So in order to find a solution to all this, we have come up with another method to solve synchronization problems, and that is known as monitors. So in this lecture, we'll be discussing about monitors. We will be seeing what are monitors and how they are used and how are they better than semaphores. So these monitors are a high level abstraction that provides a convenient and effective mechanism for process synchronization. So this is a high level abstraction that will provide us a way for process synchronization. So we'll be seeing how it is designed. So a monitor type presents a set of programmer defined operations that provide mutual exclusion within the monitor. So these monitors, they present a set of programmer defined operations that will provide mutual exclusion within the monitor itself. So in case of semaphores, we saw that the process has to be designed in such a way that they have to follow the rules of the semaphores. Like for example, the process has to execute the wait operation when they want to access the critical section. And then when they leave the critical section, they have to call the signal operations and so on. So let's say that there is a case where one of the processes were not designed carefully. The programmer had made a mistake or there are some programming errors which had led to the wrong design of a particular process. And in that process, the wait and signal operations were not defined properly. So what will happen? Even if one process is not designed carefully to follow the rules of the semaphores, then it could lead to problems for the entire system. So there could be deadlocks or other timing issues can occur if even one process is programmed wrongly. So in order to avoid this, what we have is in these monitors, it is a set of programmer defined operations and then the mutual exclusion will happen within the monitor itself. So unlike the semaphores, the process itself don't have to be programmed to follow this, but the monitor itself will provide the mutual exclusion. And then when the processes wants to access some shared data or wants to enter their critical section, they will do it via the monitors and hence the monitor will provide the mutual exclusion and all the things that is required in order to achieve the process synchronization. So that is the main difference between monitors and semaphores. And then the monitor type also contains the declaration of variables whose values define the state of an instance of that type along with the body of procedures or functions that operate on those variables. So in monitors, we will be having variables that will be shared between different processes and also we'll be having procedures or functions that will perform certain operations on those variables. So a monitor will consist of the declaration of the variables whose values will define the state of an instance of that type and also it will contain the body of the procedures of the function that operate on the variables. So the body of procedures that operate on those variables means the definition of the procedures or the functions will be within the monitor itself. So when we see the structure of its syntax, we will be understanding this in a better way. So let's take a look at the syntax of monitors and try to understand these things that we have just defined. So here is a syntax of a monitor. So the monitor is defined like this. So here we have a monitor data type. So we have already said that the monitor itself is an abstract data type. So the data type is named as monitor. And then we give the name for the monitor. Here it is written monitor name. So this can be any name that we want. So it's of monitor data type. And inside this, we have the shared variables declaration. So I was talking about the shared variables. So these are the variables that will be shared between different processes. And then we also said that the body of the procedure that operate on these shared variables will also be defined inside the monitor. So we see that there are procedures here, procedure P1, P2, and so on up to procedure PN. So we can have any number of procedures. And what are these procedures? These procedures are operations that can be performed upon these shared variables. And then finally, we have the initialization code, which will initialize the variables that we want to use. So in case of semaphores, what did we have? Whenever there is something that has to be shared, we have a semaphore 
which is shared between the different processes and all the processes were going to make use of the semaphore and modify the semaphore according to the way it needs to use it. But here in case of a monitor, we see that the shared variables itself, they are declared inside the monitor and the procedures will be making the changes to the shared variables as and when required. So the shared data itself is taken here and around that shared data, we are putting a class like this and that is how monitors are designed. Now let's see some of the features of the procedures and the shared variables and the things that are there inside the monitor. So first of all, a procedure defined within a monitor can access only those variables declared locally within the monitor and its formal parameters. So these procedures that are declared here or that are defined inside this monitor, they can access only those variables which are declared locally within the monitor and its formal parameters. So these procedures can access only those variables that are declared locally inside the monitor. So that is one feature that we have to keep in mind about the procedures that we have inside a monitor. And similarly, the local variables of a monitor can be accessed by only the local procedures. And the local variables that are there inside the monitor, it can be accessed only by those local procedures. That means the local variables that are declared inside the monitor can be changed or modified only by the local procedures that are there inside the monitor. So these are two things that we need to keep in mind. And then the monitor construct ensures that only one process at a time can be active within the monitor. So this is also a very important thing that we need to keep in mind. So it says that the monitor construct ensures that only one process at a time can be active within the monitor. So from this itself, we can see how it is going to be able to achieve mutual exclusion. Okay. So these are the main or the basic things that are required for the designing of a monitor. So here we have a monitor with the shared variables and the procedure and the initialization code. But this itself is not enough to achieve all the features of process synchronization. So in order to achieve everything in process synchronization, this is not enough. There are something more that we need to design or define in a monitor. So we'll be seeing what are those. So the extra thing that we need to define in monitors in order to achieve process synchronization are something known as condition construct. So condition construct are declared in this way, condition x, y. So this x, y means they are of condition construct type. And then the only operations that can be invoked on a condition variable are weight and signal. So here we have declared x and y variables as a condition variables. And then in this condition variables, we can invoke only two operations which are the weight and the signal. So we have already used this weight and signal even in semaphores. So even in monitors, we will be making use of this, which is an extra thing apart from all these things. And for making use of this, we need to have the condition construct. So we declare condition variables like this. And the only operations that can be performed on them are weight and signal. So what does this weight and signal mean here? The operation x dot weight means that the process invoking this operation is suspended until another process invokes the x dot signal operation. So here what it means is that let's say that there is shared variable x and um, one of the process wants to make use of that x. Now it will execute x dot wait and if it finds that some other process is already making use of that x variable, then this process will have to wait and it will be keep on waiting until and unless another process invokes the x dot signal. So we know that x dot signal is used for releasing something. So if a process wants to use this x, let's say, and then if another process is using it, so it will have to wait. So x dot wait will make it wait and it will be suspended until and unless the other process that was using that x will signal the x. So when x dot signal is invoked, then the process that actually called this x dot wait will be then able to use that x variable. And the x dot signal operation resumes exactly one suspended process. So just like how we saw here, x dot wait will lead to the waiting of one process and x dot signal will lead to the resuming of that waiting process. So that waiting process, we call it as a suspended process. So the suspended process will be resumed by the help of this x dot signal operation. So the x dot signal operation will resume exactly one suspended process. And if there are no suspended process, then there will be no effect on the x dot signal operation. 
So these are two things that again we need to keep in mind, which are the condition construct, which will also be used when we'll be designing the monitors. So these are the main things that we have in monitors. So now I'll be showing you a schematic diagram of a monitor that will help us understand how it looks like. So here in this figure, it shows the schematic view of a monitor. So here, this entire thing is a monitor. And then here we see the shared data is declared over here, which will be shared between different processes. And then here we have the operations. So the operations are actually the procedures that we were talking about. So the procedures are actually the functions which will take care of the operations that has to be performed on the shared data. So these are the operations. And then we have the initialization code, which will initialize the variables that we need to use. And then here we have the entry queue. That means the processes that wants to make use of the monitor in order to access some shared data. And then here we again have queues associated with the X and Y conditions. So we have just explained what are the X and Y conditions or the condition constructs. So within the monitor itself, there will be queues associated with X and Y condition. So when a process wants to access some shared variables and let's say that it is being used by another process at that time, so it will not be allowed to use. So there will be a wait operation which will make it wait. So it will be waiting in the queue like this. And then when another process that was using the same shared data finishes using it, it will be signaling it. So when the signal operation is invoked, so the process that was waiting will be allowed to use that variable. So the suspended process is resumed by the use of the signal function. So that queue that is associated with the X and Y conditions are present here. So this is how the schematic view of a monitor looks like. So in case of semaphores, we were having just a semaphore variable which was modified by the different processes and we saw the problems that were there. And each of the process has to be designed in such a way that they will correctly execute the wait and signal operations. So if there is a mistake in the designing of the processes, then it could lead to deadlocks, it could lead to timing errors, it could lead to many problems. But in case of monitors, since all the functions or all the main operations are done within the monitor itself, so the process design doesn't have to worry about that so much. The processes will be making use of the shared data via the monitors. So in that way, those problems that were there in semaphores will be solved. So these monitors are a high level abstract data type. And because of the way it can be designed according to our convenience in this way, it will be much better than semaphores. All right. So now we have got an idea of how these monitors work and what are these monitors. So in the next lecture, we will be applying these monitors in order to solve one of the classic problem of synchronization, which is the dining philosopher's problem. So in the previous lecture, when we discussed about the solution of dining philosopher's problem using semaphores, we saw that there were problems. There could be cases where deadlocks could arise. So we will be seeing if we can solve the same dining philosopher's problem using monitors, ensuring a deadlock free solution. So that we'll be discussing in the next lecture. And with that, we'll also get a clearer picture of how monitors are put to use. So I hope this lecture about monitors were clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.